So for those of you that are involved with the case for quality, um, either through MDIC or through others, we one thing I've often said is that the case for quality isn't just a project. It isn't an MDIC project. It isn't an FDA project. It's really a movement, and it's a movement across a lot of different um, players within our industry. And it's my privilege to introduce another one of the, those uh, partners in the case for quality, and that's uh, Steve Silverman from Avamed. He's going to talk a little bit more about quality and culture. Yeah, I have the privilege of addressing a topic that we haven't discussed yet, which is quality culture. Um, <laughs> so you're welcome. Um, and I love being the speaker before lunch. It's just massive power. How, how long will I delay you from getting your sandwiches? Um, but I'm going to actually try to be um, concise. And let me just frame the discussion. I, I don't want to repeat points that were made already. So let me get to the kind of what and why. Um, and then I'll take a step back and, and return to some of the points that I'm addressing right now. The what is within AdvaMed as a way to work synergistically with MDIC and to support FDA, we are developing a quality culture playbook. Um, and the what is, what is it? It's a tool, just a tool um, that firms will have available to them if they decide that they want to either build a strong quality culture or take what is already a strong quality culture to the next level. Um, and it has established best practices that other firms have used to undertake the same journey. Um, and so I think that one of the benefits of the work that we're doing is that we've spent a lot of time this morning talking about the importance of quality culture. We've seen some extraordinary examples for what Toyota has done, but the question remains, how do medical device firms that want to drive their own quality culture get there? Um, and so what we have developed is a journey that we think will help to take them there. But again, not necessarily the only methodology. So let me see if I can figure out how to move forward. Success. Um, okay, just by way of background, um, AdvaMed has been a long supporter of the case for quality. Um, and like MDIC, wants to partner with stakeholders and support FDA to drive the case for quality initiative. And this is just one example of what AdvaMed has been able to do in this space, which is to develop our library of successful practices. This is, again, simply a resource that focuses on specific subject matter areas, for example, design controls or supplier controls. But as you all know, AdvaMed is a large member-driven organization, and one of the benefits of that structure is that it allows us to pull from subject matter experts within our members. Um, so when we identify discrete issues, that need to be addressed, we can caucus among our members and say, hey, what do you think about this? And what have you seen that has worked? And then we can work within AdvaMed as a convener to bring together those subject matter experts and to document their experiences in terms of best practices and watch outs. We've been able to do that so far with our library of successful practices. As I mentioned, there are a couple of volumes in the library and that then relates to what we are doing in this initiative, which is, as I mentioned, um, our quality of, uh, of culture playbook. Um, and, and again, getting back to the why, um, I'll just briefly reiterate um, the points that we've covered this morning, which we all know, right? Quality culture makes sense. This is a well-known proposition. Firms that do well on quality culture save money, have a better experience with their regulators, drive customer loyalty. So I don't want to present all of those points as if you know, I'm bringing knowledge from the mountain. I'm telling you what you already know um, and what's been much better demonstrated by the speakers who preceded me. Um, but we also see that emphasizing quality culture actually dovetails nicely with the work that FDA is doing with MDIC support on quality maturity. And again, this is fairly obvious, right? Quality maturity and quality culture intersect. Firms that have strong quality culture are going to do better on measures of quality maturity than firms that don't embed quality culture into their day-to-day -day operations. So there's quite a bit of overlap among those objectives. And we feel that by helping those firms that want to drive their quality culture get there, we're also supporting FDA's goal of driving quality maturity for all of the benefits that have been communicated by FDA today and before today. Quickly, I'll just talk about what we mean when we use the term quality culture. 
Um, we're referencing the beliefs and practices within the firm that drive quality. Um, and I would say that the driving takeaway is that quality culture has to be truly enterprise-wide um, in the way that we saw with the example this morning from Toyota. So from the CEO down to the frontline employee, this commitment to quality culture needs to be understood and shared. Um, and I won't use you know, the apocryphal example of the guy sweeping up in the NASA facility talking about how his job is to get a man to the moon. You've heard all those stories. Um, but the idea is that this does have to be a shared and practiced principle and that without that continuous top level support and bottom level engagement and side to side across the enterprise, achieving quality culture becomes much, much more difficult. So let me turn to a somewhat more specific discussion of our playbook. I wanna talk about how we developed it and then I'll talk about some of the higher level principles within the playbook and then it, we do intend obviously to publish it and to make it publicly available. So this is a preview rather than a deep dive on the discrete portions of the playbook. As I mentioned, we contacted our members. I support a quality working group that has about 50 member companies and maybe 125 participants to ask the question, what is quality culture? And we had members raise their hands and say, yeah, we've thought about this and we are interested in forming a small group to be a bit more specific um, rather than having kind of general informal discussions and to try to document our learnings and best practices. Um, and what you will find as you look at the document that we release is that it does actually draw from presentations that have been made by some of the individuals in the room today. So our quality culture playbook um, draws from work that Joe Sapienti did with Covidian. It draws from Medtronic's Quality Begins With Me initiative. Many of these principles will be familiar, but because these are well-documented tested principles and because we have people who can stand up and say, yes, this worked, and I can tell you why, we felt like there was value in capturing them and putting them forward as an approach for quality culture. The playbook begins with a series of I statements, um, and, and I, I will describe them perhaps incorrectly as aspirational. Um, but what I think is distinctive about these I statements is that it returns to the point that we were discussing earlier about making quality, for sure, something other than the function of the quality group within an organization, and also clarifying at a very specific individual level that each person within the enterprise is responsible for and accountable for quality. And so we see, for example, a reference here to accountability. All individuals are responsible for quality outcomes. And what's telling, I think, about this and the principles that follow um, is that they are positioned agnostic, right? So accountability for quality, of course, applies to R&D. It applies to production. But there is a role for quality and accountability for quality within accounting, within human resources, within legal. There is nothing specific about this principle that ties it to particular functions within an organization. And the same is true of the quality principles that follow. So courageous, patient-focused, preventive. Each of these principles are position agnostic. Each of them talks about what individuals are responsible for doing. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on those particular principles um, because I think that they all reflect the same characteristics, which is a very personally based orientation and one that spans the entire enterprise. Let me talk instead about how those individual principles are operationalized within the organization, which gets to the quality culture work streams. Within the playbook, each of these points are built out and there's a lot of information on this slide. And so again, I'm gonna stay at a relatively high level. But the point is that with these work streams, we transition from, again, what may not be a totally correctly applied as aspirational statements, statements of intent, to statements of practice. So what is, what is the doing that has to occur within the organization to actually embed the quality culture behaviors and perspectives that are captured in the I statements. 
And you see there's emphasis on product awareness, visual management, continuous quality improvement, and recognition. Again, a lot of this is self-evident and touches on points that have been covered already, but there's value in documenting these practices as the drivers of quality culture and laying them out very plainly to companies that want to improve their quality culture scorecard. And you can see, for example, in the context of visual management, right? This is something that we're all very familiar with. You don't go to a manufacturing floor without seeing whiteboards that have goals and metrics to determine how organizations are doing against their goals. But I think what's critical is that the idea of visual management is not specific to the production floor, right? You can go to an organization that has a strong quality culture and see the same kind of visual management tools across the organization, even in the C-suite. So that again, everybody gets the message that they are responsible, accountable for quality, and understands what are the tools to drive that quality. So if I can go back, ha <laughs> ha. Um, I'm a technological idiot, so anytime I get something right, I have to pause to celebrate. <laughs> Just bear with me. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, I'm very comfortable with self-recognition for small victories. Um, in any event, communication. Again, communication is absolutely critical. Um, and it's nothing more than, again, what we have been talking about, and I won't bore you with it. It is telling the story and having a good story to tell across the organization. It is telling the story a lot. It is having members of the C-suite be conscientious and intentional about telling the story when they're talking with staff throughout the organization. And it's giving staff at the front line the opportunity to tell their own stories to their peers and to their managers. And that kind of cross communication and continuous communication is what embeds the practices that drive quality. Okay, so another moment of success. I created this slide. I figured out how to do the backdrop. Um, again, you're, you're welcome. Um, where are we now? Uh, we are finishing up a draft of the playbook. Um, we have shared it with FDA to try to get its input. Um, and it will become a volume in our library of successful practices. Um, but obviously, we want to do more with it than just put a book on a shelf. Um, we're going to look for opportunities to publicize and make available this playbook to all manufacturers, irrespective of whether they are AdvaMed members. Um, and this will be an iterative project. So as manufacturers take these practices, apply them, and give us feedback on the practices, obviously we'll make revisions. We will also use this experience to try to further complement the work within MDIC. So to give an example, if as we get more feedback from participants in the quality maturity pilot, we identify gaps um, or areas of opportunities for improvement, needed information, then as we did with quality culture, we can convene our members to talk about particular issues that have arisen. And if we can bring forward best practices to help companies fill in those gaps or leverage opportunities for improvement, then we continue to serve FDA and to work effectively in partnership with MDIC. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll leave it to Stephanie to say whether we have time for questions or whether we'll just go straight to lunch. Any questions or comments? When do you think you're going to get to the point where this is public? We are hoping to release this year. Um, and to have uh, some type of public discussion of it this year, probably Q3, Q4. Hey, Steve, um, just a couple of quick thoughts here. First, I, I love the fact you brought up storytelling. I'm very passionate about culture, and I think we all know stories is the way you, you really get the culture across. It could be bad stories, or good stories, right? I think what is needed in this, this playbook is the detail, the stories that go and support those different um, categories you had up there. And I loved uh, the questions that Luann asked earlier of how do you measure culture? And, and the two examples she gave, I mean, if we could get a whole list of those kinds of very specific questions, 
I think that would be very valuable. I think that that's a great suggestion with respect to layering and stories, and it's something that I can take back and we can try to do. I will tell you that as it currently stands, the playbook does not include um, metrics. It does not include mechanisms for measuring the quality culture of progression. So I'm heartened by some of the other discussions that we've had this morning about opportunities to develop and make those metrics available because it's a critical need. Um, and I know that based on some conversations with Jeff and Cisco, there's also a very strong need to give stakeholders outside of companies the means to very efficiently and clearly make an outside in assessment of firms quality performance. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. Thank you all very much for your time. Hi. All right, well, thank you, Steve. Um, we're ready to take a break. From